What's up, everybody? It's your boy Baybar to Go Bar coming at you with another Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest video. So, today I wanted to show you a Dragons themed deck. It was partially inspired by uh, Bianca, who's pretty widely known in the community, at least the uh, Oath of Tafari part of it. But uh, it's a pretty cool deck, uh, it's pretty strong. It does have a lot of bombs in it, so hopefully you have these cards, but hey, I really love the way they've made the change with no duplicates and elite packs, so now we can actually focus on cards. You'll see one of those bad boys in here, uh, but let's go through the creatures first. I guess uh, I try and put them in order, but the uh, you know the the primary most important creature here is, is Lathless, which is the Dragon Queen. She is the Dragon Leader. This means whenever a Dragon... Uh, token comes into the battlefield it basically it gets exiled and reinforces this creature as a 6-6 six, six instead and then she also has whenever a non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control reinforce this creature so if one of our other dragons comes in she gets reinforced and then activate three of your dragons get plus one plus so oh until end of turn not a big deal that one um, so that's Lathless a couple of others this, another one from M19 is Demanding Dragon when this creature enters the battlefield, if there are seven or less red gems, it deals seven damage to your opponent's planeswalker. Not bad. If, if there are more than seven red gems, destroy the first creature your opponent controls, which can actually be, that's pretty strong if you can actually make sure that the red gems are on the board. So pretty strong uh, creature, 16 mana for a 7-7 seven, seven with a ETB kill effect is, is certainly not bad. We're running a... Uh, Avaricious Dragon. This is from Origins, a really solid card, and every time I play with him, I realize I probably should be playing with him more. Uh, the big deal here is whenever you draw a card, I mean, A, it's an 8-8 for 15, which is pretty sweet, uh, definitely uh, above curve, and then um, for a flyer, and then destroy three gems of the opponent's color every time you draw a card. So, uh, wow. I mean, Nickel Bolas has his second, which draws two cards, so that's killing six gems. It's really good against players like Cloth that are heavily dependent on a couple of colors or, or any mono, really. Uh, even though the reds are, are in Nickel Bolas' color, too, it's nice to be taking out those red gems against Koth. Um, so, it does lead to a lot of cascades and stuff. Let's go on to the spells. We're just running two. We're going to run Plague Wind. <laughs> Eat that, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, I pulled this from the Elite Pack last time. Um, I really, I think the best card is the uh, the BFZ. I can't even remember what that stands for right now. Uh, Blue Sun Zeniths or whatever. B Blue BSZ, I guess. I don't know. But it's a uh, it's a bomb. Look it up. Uh, and I strongly recommend you guys uh, trying to either craft down the mythics in the second elite pack rotation, the one with the plague winds and and. Um, Blue Sun Zenith, that's what it is. Uh, and then uh, go ahead and try to pull these these bombs. These are, the, in my opinion, the two best cards in the set is Plague Winds and BSZ, and they're both in the same pack. So really try to whittle down that pack and uh, use your pinks to get these cards is, is highly recommended. But for 10 mana, you have a Black Sweeper, which destroy each creature your opponent controls. Your opponent loses two life for each creature, and um, creature reinforcement destroyed this way. So it does have a damage effect, though that's definitely... Um, not as important as the fact that it's a one-sided sweeper for 10, which is a huge, huge, huge um, advantage. Now, I will warn you that this ca card is currently bugged, so if you cast it against like plant tokens or other things with invulnerable uh, or prevent damage, I mean, it will actually strip away their reinforcements, but will leave the base creature, so it doesn't work against Karn tokens if it's indestructible, etc., which can be problematic, and I, I do hope they fix it. Um, the next one is Apex of Power. This is one of the mythics in that same pack. Exile your hand and draw six cards, then gain three mana for each card drawn this way. I initially said this card sucks. I will revise that because I, I was thinking it did it like Days Undoing, where it puts three mana in each card that you draw, but actually it, it front loads it, so it gives three mana per uh, time you draw a card. So, of course, you draw six cards, meaning you get um, 18 mana, and all 18 mana goes to the first card. If the first card gets filled, you get the um, additional mana to the next card. So it actually can be pretty strong, and probably this is too high of a curve to run this, this card in, but it would be really, really good in um, kind of lower curve decks where you can maybe fill up two or three cards in a turn. I'm sorry, with one cast. Uh, let's move on to our um, supports. We have Haphazard Bombardment, or what we have um, <laughs> dubbed Happy Bomb. And, and the reason we call it Happy Bomb is because 
it used to, um, I think, focus on your own supports, and it was, you know, or maybe just focused on itself, but it says with, while the support is on the board, at the beginning of your turn, destroy a 3x3 three three block of gems around a support. If there are no other supports on the board, the support is destroyed. Um, I don't know what it was doing before, but it was, like, targeting your own supports and not the opponent's. Uh, or something like that. Anyway, they fixed it, quote unquote, but now they made it so it doesn't actually target your supports at all. It only targets the opponent's supports. I believe, believe there's actually another bug, you can see I haven't played it a lot, where it will only work if you have a second support on the board and the opponent has a support on the board. But basically the fact that it dodges itself is pretty remarkable and makes it uh, totally broken. I never really use it because I just run Rivers Rebuke in every deck, and that's my support control and a creature control, but I decided to run Plague Winds and Happy Bomb instead. Oath of Tafari was a suggestion from Bianca, and uh, it's a great card, um, and I've used it in kind of similar ways in other decks. So you can use it in Legacy with Emrakul as your solo creature, and it is just devastating. Uh, but whenever a uh, creature is exiled, gain two loyalty, that's somewhat relevant. At the uh, end of each player's turn, exile that player's first creature and return it to the battlefield with its reinforcements. So that's really the important part here. We have stuff like Demanding Dragon that can come into the board and actually uh, call stuff. I can uh, call either damage to the Planeswalker or a dead creature for the opponent. Um, and also, any time a dragon comes into effect, except for Lathless herself, it reinforces Lathless if she's on the board. So, you know, Demanding Dragon can get popped out, exiled, brought back into the game, can kill a creature of the opponent's board, and also reinforce Lathless. So really, really strong. Um, you could use other dragons, like Valakut, if he was in standard, would be awesome with this card, because you'd do 12 damage every time, you know, if he came into the board, did 6 damage, pop him back up, do another 6 damage, a really strong card Valakut would be, but he's not in standard. Uh, Verdict's Blade Wing seems like a good fit because every time he comes in, he would have a chance to create his little Blade Wing token. But what you realize is that if you're constantly doing the same thing to your opponent's creatures, just doing a small amount of damage to him with this token, exiling him, bringing him back in, and all of a sudden they heal to full. So I actually think Avaricious Dragon, even though he doesn't really synergize with it, is better than Verdict's Blade Wing with this card. All right, a Dragon's Horde. Uh, this is one we all got from the exclusive from the Dragon War. I hope you got it. I did. <laughs> Whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control, the support gains two shields. That's relevant. At the beginning of your turn, convert three gems to your Planeswalker's colors. That's okay. Not great in Nicol Bolas because it's, you know, inconsistent with a three-color walker. And then activate three. The support loses one shield and you draw two cards. I think this is a pretty good card. I'm not sure if it's great in this deck. Uh, it's a it's pretty good draw. It's decent gener mana generation. Um, it's Dragon's Horde, so I had to run it in a Dragon's deck. Um, Storm the Vault, I'm not even going to talk about. Obvious, obvious, obvious. The Dragon Egg, when the support is destroyed, you create a Dragon Token. So again, that'll reinforce Lathless. Uh, at the beginning of your turn, this support loses one shield, so you're going from four down to uh, pop. Uh, so if you can actually put more damage on it earlier, that's good. And the opponent doesn't realize that, so they try and pop it, which is good. Also, another thing that I didn't realize when I first was uh, tinkering with this is the support card itself has the subtype Dragon. And so when it comes in, it counts as a Dragon entering the board, which reinforces Lathless, which is interesting. So... Uh, for seven mana, you can get a basically a reinforcement to your six six, and in a few more turns, get an uh, get an additional one. So, pretty strong card. All right, let's give it a whirl. Von Boo. Uh, we got the rise of the God Pharaoh coming up later today. That is, ugh, please stop running that event. Like that was the only event they ran for months, and uh, I don't know why we need to. Necro that one of all things <laughs> it's it is so played out and the rewards suck and it's boring and they changed the objectives But that did not make the event feel remotely fresh to me. So uh, I am all for them Axing that forevermore. So this is an interesting one. We have Lathless. We have Plague Wind. We have Avaricious Dragon. I'll probably just uh, Plague Wind is so strong because you can get it in two turns that I probably will just sit on it and not try and put mana in it immediately the question is, do we go for Avaricious or Lathless? The obvious thing is that Lathless will reinforce if you play Avaricious Dragon second. However, I would argue that it's probably better to go ahead and start blowing up the green and blue gems and trying to get some Cascades and get, um, and plus he costs less. So I'm going Avaricious Dragon here. Alright, that's kind of surprised he took that. 
Let's see here. Oh, there's the blue at the top, but I don't really like any of these moves, to be honest with you. I think I'm going to do some gem hate on him, actually. He's getting pretty close to that creature, but I'm going to be patient here. Uh, La uh, Plague Wind does auto cast. I might go ahead and put mana into Plague Wind after I get Avaricious down. He looks like he's about to play a card. I don't know what kind of threat it will be, but never hurts to be prepared. Yeah, I'm not really very concerned with Hannah, so to speak. He doesn't have any supports in his graveyard. Uh, I don't think I need both of these. I think I will work towards Lathless here. It's a pretty good match there. You can always get Bolas' first up to do some creature control as well. All right, well, that might have been a mistake because now he's close to flipping his Storm of the Vault, which is problematic. Now I need my Happy Bomb, I guess. I'll go ahead and kill her now. And let's get Lathless out. And I think go ahead and work on Oath of Tafari after that. I didn't quite get enough to flip that, which is good for me. You can see uh, Avaricious Dragon doing some work. By the way, Avaricious synergizes exception exceptionally well with that uh, red was it Axis of Power or whatever. What is that card I, I just was talking about? The one that um, that uh, discards your hand and draws a bunch of new cards. I mean, that's pretty obvious that they synergize well, but it is incredible how, I mean, drawing six cards and dealing and destroying three gems every time you do it is, uh, we'll just call it, call it extremely powerful. Um, I think I'll go ahead and put down the dragon egg and work towards the dragon horde. Not feeling much of a threat from the opponent at this point. All right, got Oath of Tafari. See, you see that? I just dropped the dragon egg and it re reinforced Lathless. Uh, just with the token coming on, which is interesting. Another Hannah. Not a threat to... Sometimes your opponent will drop something that every time you flicker it is not a good thing to flicker, per se. Uh, which is which is suboptimal. Um, but, yeah, I guess if we have two of them. I think I'll go ahead and draw some more cards, see what else we can find. Oh, I should have taken that match five first. That was stupid. You can see Avaricious doing work, though. All right. Now, let's see here. Do we have eight red gems or more on the board? I'll just replace the zombies if we do. Then we can save the Plague Wind. Eh, there's really no reason to save the Plague Winds. I think I want to work into this Axis of Power, and that'll do some damage to the opponent. So, I think I'll just allow... Let's see. I'm trying to see what the better move is here. If we do the black and the blue, that's um, 13 mana. At least that we can see. If we do the blue vertical into the black down, that doesn't look any better. What if we do the white into the blue? Wait, that's not even a thing. I'm delusional. All right, this is taking way too long for a game that's pretty well in hand, so I'll just make a move here. <laughs> you see Plague Wind's doing some work. I'll replace you. So you can see he didn't, the Demanding Dragon didn't actually do any damage to the, um, opponent because I had eight gems. That's kind of one of those weird oddities. It's, it's, it's not like an either, it's, it's an either or. So if you don't have a creature to kill, it just will, you know, um, sorry, let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. 
Yeah, if, if it has like more than uh, seven gems on the board, it'll just try and destroy a first creature your opponent controls. It won't go back and do the damage to the Planeswalker. So like I said, it's an either-or when he just got um, cast. So let's see what we can do here. I'll probably play another game because this went pretty quickly uh, from a gameplay standpoint. But you can see uh, the axis of power with Avaricious Dragon. Oh, weird. I wonder why it's stalled there. Doing lots of work. And sometimes you can have like practically your whole hand fill up when that goes off. Uh, unfortunately, you can see that you can't not cast Axis of Power, um, which is somewhat annoying. But at this point, Avaricious is actually running out of targets and doesn't even have anything to do at this point. Because we've killed all of his stuff. So, anyway. Uh, I guess we'll show it to you again. <laughs> Not sure why I did that. I guess I didn't realize that's what the card was. Um, so I appreciate you guys tuning in. Let me uh, let me end this one and maybe just run one more for those that want to see it. If you don't want to see it, then hang up and go build the deck yourself, my friends. All right, there you go, Mr. Van Boo. Now let's uh, get back in there and try another one. What do you say? Yeah, so I don't. I really liked the Dragon War. You guys saw my, maybe some of you probably saw my surprise ending on on that top node, <laughs> where I would have had a perfect score. I submitted a ticket. We'll see if I get some kind of compensation. It's nice to record everything you're doing because you can pretty clearly show to uh, customer service that there is zero doubt that I would have gotten a perfect score, because um, I did get a perfect score minus that that uh, crash, and I actually was live recording whenever the uh, the crash occurred so but to me it's pretty clear evidence we'll see what they say but uh i think they'll probably compensate me for it so that's the good news because typically if you don't record it and you have no evidence they say well we can't compensate you on a hypothetical and it's like well it wasn't hypothetical like i literally only lost that but say la vie okay so this is the opposite he doesn't have anything so i'm going to go ahead and prioritize laughless even though this might be a mistake, it is kind of annoying playing Bolas, who, you know, it's like you spend a lot of turns getting a 21 mana creature out, and then he immediately uses his first and kills it. But Bolas is one of the few you have to play around quite a bit, in my opinion. If he's kind of ahead of you when it comes to loyalty, you basically just want to, like, pass on, um, on playing creatures until he actually casts his second. Which I'm not really sure any other Planeswalker I feel like I need to play around in that manner. Uh oh, we got the mirror match going on. Alright, challenge accepted. Let's really love to get Storm the Vault down. But Demanding Dragon is online right now, so maybe that's the smarter choice. Even though he'll probably take some of these red gems. I'm not sure how exactly this is going to work out. I do have my first online now, so maybe that's the smarter choice. Yeah, I think that's probably the better choice is to go ahead and work in this direction. And then get the Storm of the Vault down. Save the Demanding Dragon. And get Avaricious down. Even though Avaricious is weird when it's killing... It's prioritizing killing your own gems, but, I mean, it's still pretty strong. We probably should have... Definitely after this attack... Is there any supports I can get down? So I have one support. I'll play two more treasures. And I could get a dragon egg down, but that won't give me enough for STV to flip. So... I think I just work towards Avaricious Dragon here. Hope we get a red down here. Not terrible. Took out one of my treasures, does that matter? Ooh, Happy Bomb, even though I haven't seen him play a creature. I really want to play this card. Yeah, let's prioritize our happy bomb. See if we can actually see what it does. I feel like every time I've played with it, I've never drawn it in time to make it useful. Um, it's weird. The left side of the board has not moved the entire game. 
I think this is probably the most likely good play. That worked out well. There we go, reinforced lathless. He still doesn't have his, and I still don't have that online. That's annoying. Now, now he's gonna get a five drop and a Joda. And, oh, good lord! Things are looking down all of a sudden, aren't they? <laughs> oh, awesome! Fucking kidding me? Seriously? Are you serious? Come on, man! All right. Damn, he just kicked my ass right there. And he killed, like, all of my treasures, so I can't even flip Storm the Vault still. That's so ridiculous. I think it's probably necessary to go into Apex here. He's got a lot of power on board. I mean, I could, I guess I could go Happy Bomb first. That's mine. care to kill that I guess all right let's see here let's try that there we go that's a freaking thing of beauty isn't it it's kind of nice having these plague winds in, <laughs> in the deck uh, oh oh yes yes does that feel like a pretty good recovery from that spot <laughs> man that card is dope I mean, this is the situation where I'm going to need to just kind of slow play and let him get his zombie tokens out first. Alright. I guess we can play that. I think I'm going to turn these guys off for now. Wait on his second. Does anyone else feel like about Nickel Bolas makes up about 80% of the games you play? That was Dragon Horde making some, some work there. That was good. Uh, so if I do play my dragon, he will kill it rather than casting his second, which is not what I want. So I am going to just uh, get the mana but not play him. Wait for him to cast his zombie stack. Now we can go ahead and play our Avaricious Dragon. We'll go right into... Yeah, well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and kill this guy. No reason not to that I can think of right this moment. Um, I think the white one over here is going to drop down into a nice blue match. I can't believe I've had Storm the Vault on the board this long and can't get it to flip. <laughs> I'm not saying the card's not really, really powerful, but I, I see people literally put it in every deck, like even like legacy ones with like a bunch of green ramp, and I'm like, what is that card doing there? That's not the theme of this deck. I get that it's exceptional, but uh, it, it doesn't, it, does, it shouldn't just be like, I put it in there because it's a card that's good. It's like, come on, use your noggin. I'm talking to you, Shaper. <laughs> All right. Um... He's been trolling me lately, so I'm, I'm, I'm giving it I'm giving it back to you, buddy. Um, <laughs> let's see. There's Lathless down. All right, that's looking good. Don't think I need that. Don't think I need that. I guess I should probably hold the dragon. No real reason to drop him down. I, I guess I'd buff my Lathless. But it's probably smarter to see if he gets a, a threat down that I can kill with Demanding Dragon. Did I have a creature die? I think I just... Yeah. All right. Let's YOLO. So I'm 
one turn from lethal. And finally, <laughs> we flip our vault. Perfect. All right, that's no threat. Bam. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, red, no, 10, 11, that red gem, so that'll do. Go ahead and drop our demanding dragon. Knock that guy out, dead Zakima, and lethal. All right, appreciate you guys watching. We still haven't seen what Happy Bomb does. I guess I'm gonna have to play test it and, and find somewhere I can shoot a video. But appreciate you guys looking, uh, watching, the, watching the video, and uh, give me a shout out. Let me know, follow my channel, and let me know what decks you guys wanna see. Thanks again to Beacon for the idea of, uh, of this deck. Appreciate it, guys. Bye-bye.